Israeli security forces have seized an emergency aid convoy accompanied by a delegation of European diplomats dragging people out of their cars in the West Bank and forcing them to lie face down in the dust. The supplies were intended for citizens of a Palestinian village whose homes were demolished by the army after a court ruled people didn't have proper building permits. Well, let's get an opinion on this story from human rights activist Peter Tatchell. Uh, why do you think the army was so harsh here? I mean, dragging people out of their vehicles, forcing them onto the ground. Some of them had diplomatic immunity, after all. It does seem quite extraordinary. You know, Israel prides itself on being a nation that is governed by the rule of law. Yet every aspect of this incident is in defiance of both Israeli and international law. The starting point, of course, is that this incident happened in the occupied territories, which the global consensus is that Israel is illegally occupying since they were seized in the 1967 war. So Israel shouldn't even be there. But if it is going to be there, as the occupying power, it has a duty to safeguard the welfare and interests of all the people in that territory. And quite clearly, denying aid to destitute Palestinian families who've had their homes demolished by the Israeli military, that is quite clearly not fulfilling their obligations under international law to safeguard people in the territories they control. All right, so um, this is against international law, Peter. Really, what, what, really damaging. What, what, could, what could happen? I mean, clearly the, the Israeli authorities should be held accountable for this, but will they? Well, of course, that is the big, big problem. Um, we have Israel backed by Britain, the United States, and most other Western powers, and time and time again they have looked the other way when Israel has violated fundamental human rights. Um, you know, I think the time has really come for Western powers to say to Israel, if you don't abide by international law and by generally accepted international human rights standards, we're going to cut the aid. And without that aid, Israel cannot survive. It depends on that aid, and I think it's time that aid was cut back, or at least the threat was made to cut it back, while Israel continues to act in this provocative way. It is a huge own goal. Any reasonable person, even people who are sympathetic to Israel, will find this treatment of European diplomats absolutely shocking and inexplicable. Well, of course, you mentioned European diplomats. France involved, Britain, and indeed Australia. What sort of reaction do you think we could see from those countries? Well, you would think that these countries would protest in the strongest possible terms and would haul the Israeli ambassadors uh, in their countries before their foreign ministers and give them, give them a proper dressing down because this is no way to treat foreign diplomats. It, it, it defies all conventions and protocols between countries. But I'm sad to say that Israel has done these kinds of things, perhaps not necessarily with diplomats, but certainly other serious human rights abuses and all we've got from Western countries is mostly tut-tut. You know, that is not good enough. The Israel-Palestinian conflict is a cancer on the world today. It is an instrument or a means of so much ill will. It has to be solved, and these kind of actions, denying aid to destitute Bedouin refugees who have had their homes demolished by the Israeli military, this is not the way to go. Human rights activist Peter Tatchell, live there in London. Thank you very much indeed for your thoughts. Good to hear from you.